Hi everybody, Peter here once again. Thanks for joining me for some more stories today. Um, before I get into the stories, I just wanted to explain something very, very quickly. I get a lot of messages from people saying I must be a very short guy. I, I'm not. I think what it is, I have to kind of sit with this gap above my head because of my the top of my screen will show in the picture otherwise i'm actually six foot one inch so I'm, I'm not that small okay that's that's just for the guys who were wondering there right three good stories today the first one is quite long and the second two are pretty short i've got quite a bit to say about the first story but i'm going to do that at, i'm going to say that at the end because i don't want to spoil it for you um it's so hard not to say anything right now but i, I i'm not going to say anything just have a listen to this guy see what you think My story starts in 2007 when I was planning a holiday to either Thailand or the Philippines with a friend from work. His name is Stan, an older guy who used to be an engineer in the same company that I worked for. In the end, we decided that we would have two weeks in Thailand for August of that year. Stan was looking forward to it as he had heard my stories about Thailand. I had been a couple of times before, just holidays, messing around with bar girls. I just like their company and did not want a serious relationship with any of them as I had heard the horror stories of other guys losing everything. August arrived, we flew out to Thailand. We were planning three nights in Bangkok and were booked into the Nana Hotel on Sukhumvit Soi 4. After the first three days we would fly to Phuket. The first night we just hung around Nana Plaza having a laugh and a joke and enjoying the atmosphere. On the second night, Stan asked me where he could buy some copy football shirts, Rolexes, DVDs, that sort of thing. I said Pat Pong Night Bazaar would be a good place for all of that. So we jumped in a taxi and we went off to Pat Pong. Stan got the Rolex for a really good price. I was impressed as it was his first trip to Thailand. A bit later on, the heavens opened up and there was a massive downpour. Everyone ran for cover. Quick Stan shouted, let's go in this go-go bar for cover. The name of the bar was the Kiss Bar with lots of girls on stage. I was seated next to a girl who worked there and she said her name was Prida, or I could call her Pri, her nickname. Prida pointed to a girl on stage and said that girl was her niece. I thought that was a bit unusual. Stan was joking with an overweight girl about 45 but she was happy to have drinks with him. Prida told me she was 34, about the same age as me at the time. I was in two minds about asking her to join me outside, outside of the bar as I had not slept months since arriving and didn't feel like partying. In the end, me and Stan left alone. We had one for the road in Nana Plaza but before hitting the hotel for a good night's sleep. The next day, Steve wanted to buy some presents for his family, so we went back to the MBK shopping mall in the evening. We went back to the Kiss Bar in Pat Pong. Prida was there, so we chatted for a while. By now, I was feeling refreshed after a good night's sleep. I decided to pay Prida's bar fine, and we left the bar together. We had a drink at Gulliver's. She told me her mother was in ill health and started crying. I said, I'm sorry to hear that. She also said sorry to me, but that was not a problem. I was a little concerned for her. She went on to tell me that she had two sons from past relationships from two different Thai guys. I told her that was not a problem for me. I asked, what would you like to drink? She said water, as she had never touched alcohol. I was surprised at this, as most of the bar girls I know can drink me under the table. We went back to Nana Hotel and I had a nice, we had a nice meal together in the coffee shop. The next morning we said our goodbyes and me and Stan set off for Phuket. The trip to Phuket was scheduled for one week. We did the usual stuff, visit the beer bars in Bangla Road, drinking, playing Connect Four with the girls who work in the bars. After two days in Phuket, I said to Stan, I'm really missing Prida. I don't know, we just clicked. Stan said that she seemed to be a nice girl, not like the other girls from the bars. I said, what do you think if I cut my trip short here and go back and see her? Stan said, yes, go for it. I can't see you finding a nice girl down here in Phuket. I went to a travel agent, booked a flight for the following day back to Bangkok. I arrived back in Bangkok in the afternoon. I booked just one night in the Nana Hotel. Then in the evening, I went back to the Kiss Bar in Pat Pong. Prida looked happy to see me. I told her I cut my Phuket trip short to see her. I had just over a week left on my holiday and told her that I wanted to spend the rest of my time in Thailand with her. I had 
to compensate the bar for taking Preda out for the week, but it wasn't so expensive and I was looking forward to her company, spending time with her. I also agreed to pay Preda for her time. Once that was done, we were all set for a good time. I asked Preda where she would like to go. She asked me if I had ever been to Col Samet. I had never been, so we decided Col Samet it was then. We stayed five nights just chilling out on the beach and in the evenings going for candlelit dinners. Col Samet was nice and quiet and a good place for couples who wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle of Bangkok. I felt myself falling for Preda. She came out with a classic bar girl one-liners like the night I met her was the first night she was working in the bar. She went on to tell me that she only wanted to be with me and no one else. She then went on to say that she had made 50,000 baht in her first month working there. Funny, I thought I met her on her first night of working in the bar. Nonetheless, I was enjoying her company. The Koh Samet trip had come to an end, so we made our way back to Bangkok for our last night. Once again, I checked into the Nana Hotel. We met up with Stan. We just did a bar crawl around Nana Plaza once again. Preda was with us and was just drinking water. She seemed so different to the other girls. In the morning, we checked out and headed to the airport. Preda came with us. I said my goodbyes to her and promised I would be back to see her as soon as possible. She then said she did not want me to go and started crying. I've never seen anything like this before and felt bad leaving her she, when she was like this. I said to Stan a little bit later, what do, you think, what do you make out of her crying? Do you think that was sincere? Or I wonder if that was something they do, just pull on your heartstrings to relieve you of the last few baht you might still have at your, in your pocket at the airport. Stan said, no, I don't think so. You could see how upset she was. I turned my phone off for the flight home. When I landed at Heathrow, I switched it back on. There were about 10 messages from Preda saying, have a safe flight, please. Call me when you get home. Let me know you got home. I thought it was very sweet of her. She seemed so nice. The next few months we would speak every day, but one day she told me she was having a house built in Surin, her hometown, and would I be okay if she worked in the bar for one more year to pay for the house. I was, send, I was not sending her money, so I could not really say no, but it was driving me crazy thinking of how many guys would see her in that year. I don't have the best paid job in the world, but I wanted her to stop working in the bar. The next day when we spoke, I told her I had very little savings, only about 3,000 pounds. That's about 120,000 baht. But if I gave you it all, would that be enough to stop you working at the bar? She said yes, but she wanted to work one more month just handing out flyers outside of the bar. Okay, no problem, I said, but I will only give you the money in person when I get there on my next trip. I booked a flight for December 28 for a couple of weeks. I thought it would be great to see out the new year with Preda. Preda met me at the, whole, at the airport. It was great to see her once again, and we stayed again at the Nana Hotel. On New Year's Eve, we went to some go-go bars. I remember thinking of friends back home staying in or going to their local pub, freezing in the cold weather, yet here I was in a t-shirt and shorts with a beautiful girl on my arm. We seen the new year in at the Nana Disco. It was the best new year I had ever had. Just after midnight, I was getting a little drunk and came out with something very stupid. I'd made plenty of mistakes in my life, but this one was going to be the most stupid ever. I turned to Preda and said, let's get married on this trip before I go home. Preda looked at me and said, are you serious? I said, yes. The next day, Preda rang her family to share the good news. I rang my family in the UK and told them about the upcoming wedding. To say they were surprised is an understatement. A few days later, we went to the MBK Centre and bought gold rings for both of us. Preda told me that because I gave her the £3,000 or the 120000 baht, I would not have to pay a dowry, just have some food and a little party with her family. We got married in a registry office in Bangkok. Afterwards, we got to Surin, stayed in a hotel there as Preda's house was just being built. That evening, I met Preda's mother, brother and sisters, also Preda's youngest son, who was only seven at the time. I also seen Preda's niece, the one she had pointed, to, pointed out to me in Patpong. She had also married one of her customers, Tim, an English guy who was about 60 at the time. He lived in Thailand and they were having a house built next to ours. It was great to have someone English to talk with. Preda and I visited Hua Hin. It was nice just chilling and eventually the holiday came to an end. 
I told Prida that I would be back in April, but in the meantime, I would apply for a visa for her to join me in the UK, as this is what we both wanted. When I got back to the UK, I found out that a friend from work had married a girl on his first trip to Thailand, so he... He, came, he was very kind and came round my house and helped me with the paperwork for the visa. It was all a minefield to me. I would never have done it without his help. April came and I flew back to Thailand. Prida's visa was approved, which we were both happy about. We then decided to take a holiday in Pattaya. The time seemed to fly by and it wasn't long before it was time to fly home. This time at the airport, it felt okay. It was strange saying, see you next month in the UK. I was in the UK for a month and it was almost time for Prida's flight. I sent her the money for the ticket and when she arrived I met her at Heathrow Airport. We took the National Express coach to my hometown. The first few months went fine. I got Prida registered with the doctors and the dentists and I got her a bank account as she said she wanted to work. After a few months she got a job in the same company as me on night shift. I did the day shift, as she was on night she earned a lot more money than me, but I paid for most things. I did not mind, I would treat her to weekends in London to see a show and, to, and she would also like going to Harrods and buying Louis Vuitton handbags, but at least the handbags she bought were with her own money. I did not understand the need for brand names, but if that's what she liked, fair enough, her money. In the summer I would pay for us to go to Cornwall, it was, a ni it was nice having a woman to share life with but she would get very upset over silly things it was it was not too bad to start with but over time it, it just got worse one afternoon we were at home she asked me about the girls i saw in thailand before i met her i did not want to talk about it as it was all in the past and that's where it should stay prida got angry and told me that if i ever see another girl in, girl in thailand we would be finished I tried, I tried to tell her I would never do that now I'm married and the girls I used to know are in the past but she kept pushing it. In the end I raised my voice and said in a sarcastic tone, let's talk about the past, let's really enjoy ourselves. She looked shocked, then slapped me across the face. She ran out of the kitchen, down the garden, ran the side of the house and in the front door where I was still sat and just for good measure gave me another slap. I think she hoped I would chase her outside. After she slapped me again, she said sorry. She said that I could do the same to her to make it fair. I told her that there is no excuse for a man hitting a woman and there is no excuse for her hitting me. And I, and I think she hoped I would do the same to her so that she could tell people at work and show them the marks, but I would never hit a woman. There were lots of similar instances like this over time. It was, becoming to, it was beginning to dawn on me that I had made a big mistake marrying someone I hardly knew who I met in a go-go bar in a red light area. About a year later, we flew to Thailand to see Prida's family. The house in Surin had been built by this time, so we stayed there, had a little party with the family. I took her son swimming in the hotel swimming pool as he had never been in a swimming pool before and he looked really happy and he was enjoying himself. Prida was planning to spend more time in Surin with her family, so I asked her if she would mind if I went to Phuket for a few days as it would be nice to go to the beach before we went home. To my surprise, she was okay with it and she said she would join me in Phuket in a few days. I checked into the CNN Hotel, a nice hotel at the top of Bangla Road. I did not want to go to the busy bars at night as I was, not, as I was now married and it did not seem right to do that. There was a quiet bar at the top of Bangla Road which was shown American wrestling on TV. I just thought I would chill here. And there were two ladies who worked there. The usual bar girl conversation took place. They took me to their, they told me their names, asked me my name, but I was quick to tell them I was married and my wife would be joining me in a couple of days. No problem, they said. Bring her here. Everyone welcome her. They seemed nice enough. A couple of nights later, Prida arrived. We had a night out. We visited different bars and at the end of the night, Prida, Prida wanted to buy something from 7-Eleven. We had to walk past the bar I was drinking in before. The girls remembered me as I walked past. They waved and said, hello, Dave. I put my hand up to them. The look on my wife's face was one of horror. Prida thought the worst. I said, I went for a beer and watched the TV. That's it. Then how they know your name, she asked. I said, they asked me and I told them. I also told them about you so they know I'm married. I even said, why don't we have a drink there to prove I'm telling the truth? Prida told me, I'm not going in the bar. 
her words, not mine, bar girls are rubbish. They gave my country, they give my country a bad name. I could not believe what I was hearing. I'd met her in a go-go bar. I did not say anything. What's the point? I just wanted her to shut up about it. We were supposed to be on holiday to have a nice relaxing time. After we got back to the room, she just couldn't let it go. She went on and on about these girls in the damn bar for over three hours. I don't normally lose my temper or raise my voice, but after three hours of her constant nagging, I finally snapped and shouted. I had a couple of cold beers in the bar while watching TV. What the hell did you want me to do? Sit in the room until you get here? Her reply was to scratch her nails deep into my back until she drew blood. I did not say anything. There was also a single bed in the room. I just got into the bed and left her to it. The next day, she said sorry. I told her I lost control. It was my fault for raising my voice. I said, just forget it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. It was soon time to go home. On the flight home, we sat next to another Thai lady who was struggling with the overhead lockers and her bags. I asked, can I help? She smiled and said thank you. Preda gave me a very dirty look. Later into the flight, when the lady had gone to the toilet, Preda said when we land at Heathrow, do not help this woman. She is rubbish. She looked at us very low. I did not agree. The lady seemed very friendly, much more so than Preda. I did help the lady again and got shouted at. I was glad the holiday was over and I could go back to work. A few more years passed and it's now 2017. Preda had not been up had not been to Thailand for a year. She was due to go in March and had saved her holiday up at work and carried some days over. She was gone for a total of seven weeks. I did not go. I wanted to save money and go the following year. A few weeks before her trip to a few a few weeks before her trip, Preda said something very strange. She said, when you go to Thailand, if you want to take a girl back to your room, no problem. I was shocked and upset, this coming from the woman who used to tell me that she would divorce me if I ever looked at another girl, let alone sleep with one. I told Preda that I would never do that. It was just not me to deceive somebody. Then came the second popular bar girl line. Up to you, she said. The day of her flight arrived, I took her on the National Express coach to Heathrow. She was on messenger all the time. I thought it must be her family getting excited about seeing her when she gets back. She barely said two words to me for the whole of the journey. When we arrived at the airport, I said, let me know when you get there safely. She shouted back at me, don't tell me what to do. I only meant it in a caring way. The following day, I had a message on my tablet. I did not have a smartphone at the time. A guy called Paul, who worked with, set, uh, worked with us, said in the message, have a great holiday, see you when you get back, sexy legs. It was my account, she forgot that I had access to the messages, that's how I got the message. I think because I did not have a smartphone, she thought that I would not see any messages, but she had forgotten about the tablet. I scrolled through the messages between Paul and Preda. I looked at the time and date, she was even talking to him when I was sat next to her on the couch. One message from Preda to Paul said, I cannot wait for the seven weeks to go quickly so I can see you again. Another said, I will be single next year latest, ha ha. Paul wrote, when you come back, you can get into bed when he is at work. She sent silly love heart stickers in her messages to Paul. I now understand why she had said I can sleep with other bar girls if I wanted to. She wanted me to get, she wanted me to get the blame for the marriage not working. I could not take it all in. I know it was not a happy marriage, marriage but I did not expect expect her to do this to me. I just printed the messages off my tablet and sent them to the works legal team. They said it does not prove she has cheated. In my book it was unreasonable behaviour so I divorced her anyway. I acted quite normal while communi communicating with Preda in Thailand. This time I was the deceiver. She had no idea that not only I, had I discovered what she was up to, but while she was still in Thailand, I cleared out our flat apartment, moved out. It was a council property anyway, so no great loss, but I held on to the key keys until she returned. When she got back, I met her at the airport, but did not tell her anything. I had printed out her messages, including a photo of her not wearing a lot of clothes while with Paul. I left them on the coffee table in the lounge. When she got back and seen all the printouts of the messages, she just looked at them with disbelief. I told her, you won't be single next year, you will be single this year, and I have also moved out. It was really bad luck for her, really, because by this time Paul had found an English girlfriend. 
Prita would still ask me to help her with small jobs, which I did for a while. She said, I'm only in this country because of you and we not divorce, okay? She say, she went on to say, I will give you the money back for doing that with Paul. I said, it's not about the money, I just don't trust you anymore. She got very angry and said, I'm a low class person with no good heart. I said, if that's how you feel, that's fine. It wasn't me who slept around, was it? That's about it. I left her to do to it. I received a further 20 or so messages from her saying, sorry, you're a good guy. I just get angry with people. She also said that it was not true about Paul and even it was not true, true about Paul and her, even though she had had said sorry and I, I had the evidence. She tried to make out it was all work gossip. What a lot of crap. The divorce came through in January 2018, exactly 10 years after I had married her. I later found out that she went on a date with a lorry driver from the same company, but it only lasted about a year. Friends have told me if he sees her, he just ignores her. I can only guess that she treated him the same way she treated me. It now turns out that she has started seeing a retired guy in his 60s. As for me, I have been back to Thailand. I, I have been back to Thailand since. My friends were surprised. They said we thought you would have had enough of visit in Thailand after such a bad experience. Thailand is an amazing country, full of nice people. I'm not going to let one person put me off Thailand. Looking back, I was simply naive. I just did everything wrong. I married a girl from a gogo bar. I hardly knew her. Bar girls are okay for fun on holidays, but you have to wake up to the fact that they are there to make money. Despite what they might tell you, these girls are not in the bars looking for a lifetime partner. That said, there are many nice girls in Thailand with a good education and background who I think would be loyal, just not in the bars. I'm talking to another girl now and not from a bar, but I'm certainly not rushing into anything ever again. Right now, it would be great just to get back to Thailand and enjoy it all again. Thanks for reading my story out, Peter. I'm enjoying everything you do with the channel. Hope to have a beer or two with you when you get back to Thailand. Wow. Okay, let's analyze that very, very quickly. So it's going to be really easy to criticize this guy who made a lot of mistakes. Um, I can imagine the sort of comments that are going to come on to the uh, channel after this story. But at the end of the day, he'd gone into this bar full of charming women and she was drinking water. You know, I think that's something that she did in purpose to make herself look different. And it certainly worked, didn't it? So as I've said to you in the past, you shouldn't paint all Thai women with the same brush. I would say most Thai women are very decent women. They wouldn't even go back to a room with you alone. And, you know, where he was talking about having nights out with her and going around the go-go bars, a, a regular Thai woman wouldn't do that. She wouldn't go into a go-go bar. It's just, it's just, you know, a decent girl would not do that. So with the bar girls, um, you know, we don't want to be, I don't want to say anything bad about them or, or, or talk badly about them. They're a lot of fun. They do what they have to do, as I've mentioned many, many times. And, you know, when you go out for a night, you can have a lot of fun with them. But you've got to remember, guys, like he's, like this guy says in the story, um, they're there for a reason. They're making money for their family. So as tempting as it might be, uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, try to date a girl who works in a bar or a gogo bar and take it seriously. Um, as many people often say, would you do it in your own country? All right. Um, I'm not going to say anything more on this story. It's very easy to criticize him about a lot of things, but I just think it's a typical car crash bar girl story. All the signs were there. If you, you guys who are experienced, who've been to Thailand many, many times, she wouldn't have got past the first gate, meaning when she said it was her first night working in the bar, you, you would have dropped it right there and then. But again, the guy was not, um, he wasn't experienced. And all these stories, the first night in the bar, you know, I only want to be with you and drinking water. And it, it was all there, wasn't it? Um, so hopefully if you're going to go to Thailand, you've never been before and you're in a similar situation, hopefully this particular story will stay in the back of your mind if you have a similar situation. And with that, we're going to jump straight into the second story. Okay, as I'm sure you all know by now, I I encourage people to actually send in normal stories as well. I don't want to just tell stories about bar girls. I know they're kind of entertaining because of how it goes most of the time. Um, but I do encourage people to send regular stories in as well. A uh, couple of short stories here. The last one is another bar girl story, but this one is kind of a, a nice kind of story. But let me jump straight into this one. You can see what you think. It's quite short. Hi, Peter. I'm loving the stories that viewers have been submitting lately and wanted to share another one from me. 
You read a story of mine some weeks ago about my time in Pattaya and I wanted to share this one as well. I was hesitant as a story still has a lot of emotions, mostly good but regret as well, but thought it should be shared as it's an important one. I'm a Canadian who was 30 back then and I stayed for two weeks in Bangkok in, Mar in March 2018. Every day in Bangkok I walked at least 20 kilometers. My walks would take me to Tong Lo, Egamaya and Sukhumvit area. While exploring, I would make a note to see how middle-class Thais live by hanging out where they hang out. One night I popped into a bar that was mostly attended by young Thais who seemed to be professional types. I was a fish out of water as I'm a brown male, so I stood out. I was having a drink at the bar when a Thai woman started chatting with me. She introduced herself as Nan and she told me she was a real estate worker. We hit it off pretty quickly as we shared stories of our travels, music and keeping fit. I got her number and we met up on Saturday at Siam Paragon and by the end of the day we had walked a total of 54 kilometres. We explored so much of Bangkok that she didn't know half of the places we stumbled upon. We had drinks at a popular pop-up under the bridge bar, met a, couple of, met a group of Israeli soldiers fresh off mandatory military service and drank in front of a convenience type store run by an older lady near Chinatown. It was clear Nam wasn't used to this as she carries herself more like an older professional than her true age, but to see her interact with ties from a different class along with tourists who she admitted she didn't care for was something I enjoyed as she really began enjoying herself when she was starting to let her hair down. We met several of her co-workers in Tonglo later that night. I had no idea how successful she really was until I met her co-workers and her assistant. When we, when we described our day they were shocked she did all that and doubted, no doubtedly shocked that she was actually hanging out with a, with a dreaded tourist, haha. -ha. When my time in Bangkok came to an end, I was truly sad to be leaving her as we had both formed a bond. She became emotional as she described that she never felt this way about someone and was really happy she met me. I wanted to stay so badly but knew I had to leave. We have kept in contact since and she is now dating a good guy and having a great life with this guy. I suspect she will be getting married soon as she has indicated as much and I am happy for her and him. However, I do feel like we would have had a great life together if somehow I'd stayed in Bangkok, but maybe I'm just being delusional. Either way, the experience we shared will stay with me always and thought I, I, I thought I'd share my experiences with you and your audience as we all look forward to the day we can return to the land of smiles. Okay, so no car crash story there, just an interesting little story. Hope you like that one, guys. And so into our third and final story today, and I'll just jump straight into it. Hi, Peter. Our friend Freddie is 67 and we have enjoyed his company on several holidays to Thailand over the last few years. He is a humorous guy and generous to despite not being fabulously wealthy. On one trip a few years back, we spent our final part of our trip in Bangkok and it was here in one of the usual bars, Hillary 4, that Freddie met Nantawan. Freddie seemed to have a great time with Nantawan and was looking forward to seeing her on our next trip. When we arrived home, it was not long before Nantawan hit Freddie up for some money. Freddie, being the nice guy that he is, didn't mind helping out, as we all do, given our state of wealth in comparison to most Thais who work in the entertainment industry. It did not take long, however, for many of the ensuing requests to become more frequent and for larger amounts of money. The requests all seemed to have a sense of urgency and desperation to them, so that Freddie felt compelled to help. Enter Kevin, Freddie's longtime friend. Freddie had already helped Nantawan by sending her some money. What we got him to do was think more about the reason she was giving and think back to many of the videos we know he watched on your channel, Thailand Bound. What follows are the top five requests for money from Nantawan. Number one, she needed money to pay for her car loan. This was a considerable amount of money. When Freddie said he could not afford what she was asking, she lowered the amount. The latter adjustment was probably a way of working out what his financial threshold was. Number two, her roof needed fixing. This was a bit of a strange one as she was living in rented accommodation at the time. Three, her son was involved in a car accident and urgently needed money to get his car fixed. There was no quote or price 
and when Freddie mentioned what about insurance, the request was then changed from for the insurance excess. Strangely enough, her son also works, but for some reason he could not contribute. Four, her mother was in hospital and ur urgently needed money for medical attention. The request was accompanied by a picture of an elderly woman in a wheelchair. We were not sure if it was really her mother or not, but Freddie, wising up to her by this stage, checked online to find out that Thailand has a national healthcare system for its citizens. He was then told it was a private hospital by Nantawan. Five, she had been arrested and needed money for bail. By far, we think that this is the best request of all, but despite our curiosity, Freddie ignored this one, so we have no idea why or for what reason she was in this situation. At least there was not a request for the sick village buffalo, Finally, Nantuan as, a, Nantuan, as a token of her affection for Freddy, sent a nice photograph of the pair of them together. Freddy showed it to us, and we are still trying to work out who the guy is. We think he's a pom. Yes, we are Australian. Unfortunately, Freddy is afraid to ask. Compared to some of your stories, Nantuan, Nantuan seems to be a rank amateur. She has, though, been incessant and always needy to the point where Freddy feels obliged to help. Freddy has helped but fortunately has realised unless this stopped, the request would continue and perhaps become even more absurd. Okay, guys, that's the three stories for today. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, you know, I said a few weeks ago, I might not be able to continue with the stories. Well, good news for you guys who like them. For the moment, I am getting sent in stories and I am able to um, continue with these stories. I'd also like to thank all the people who have written to me, giving me encouragement. So thanks for that. All right. Um, as always, tonight, 9pm UK time, I'll be back for the live stream. It went very well again last week, two hours and two minutes, I think it was. If you have nothing better to do tonight, uh, why not come along and join in the chat? You can say whatever you want, as long as it's clean, and uh, hope, hopefully you'll enjoy your time in the chat as well. All right, guys, thanks again. That's it for this week. Uh, I'll see you later this evening on the, on the live stream.